Let the glory of the Lord let it rise, rise among us. us. Let the glory of the Lord let it rise, rise among us. Let the praises of, of our King let it rise, rise among us. Let it rise. Mm -hmm. Sing, oh, oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, oh, let it rise. Let it rise. Yeah. Let the glory let of the Lord say. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise. Let the praises of our King rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise. Let the praises of our King rise. Let the praises of our King rise. The spirit of the Lord say, Let the spirit of the Lord let it rise. rise Come on us. now, let, let the spirit of the Lord let it rise. rise let the praises of, of our King let it rise. rise. Come, Come on us. now, let it rise. Hey, hey, hey. So we sing. Oh. Joy of the Lord say, let the joy of the come Lord on now, let it rise. rise among mm, us. Let, let the, the joy, joy of the come Lord on now, let it rise. rise among let us. the praises of, of our King, let it rise. rise among come us. on rise among now, us. we've got to let it rise. So we sing, oh. oh, oh. So we're singing, oh, 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 and let it rise, oh, yeah. Let it rise. So we sing, come on, we're singing, oh, oh, yeah. We're singing, oh, yeah. We're singing, oh, oh, oh yeah. Our King, of our King, let it rise. rise Come on now, let it rise. Hey, hey, hey. So we sing, oh, oh, oh. let it rise. Let it rise. Yeah. Let the joy of the Lord say, let the joy of the Come on Lord now, let it rise. Mm, let the joy. Come on now, let it rise. Let the praises of, of our King let it rise. rise among Come on let now, rise. we've got to let it rise. So we sing, oh, 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 oh let it rise. rise. Mm. So we sing. Let the glory of 
on the Lord say, let the joy of the come on Lord now, let it rise. Let the joy come on now, let it rise. Let the praise us. of let our King, of our King. Let, it let it rise. Come on let now, we've got to let it rise. So we sing. Oh, 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 let it rise. So we sing.
Wednesday night announcements for February the 7th, 2024. Darwin, Pam Stevens, and family on the passing of his sister, Martha Joyce Stevens Jones. Visitation is 2 p.m. The funeral service is 3 p.m. on Friday, February the 9th at Pewitt in the Heights Funeral Home. Curly Harris and family on the passing of her cousin, Marguerite Bryant. Her funeral is Saturday, February the 10th in Jacksonville, Florida. She requests your prayers for traveling grace. Robert, uh, Samantha Scott, Patrick Scott and family on the passing of their mother, Marcia Lynn Scott, and to Sierra and Sean, their grandmother. Viewing is 9 a.m. Funeral service is 10 a.m. Saturday, February the 17th at Thomas Boulevard Church of Christ in Port Arthur, Texas. Services entrusted to Gabriel Funeral Home and Jessica Ivory and family on the passing of her grandfather, William 
Ivory Senior. Visitation is 11 a.m. Funeral is 12 noon on Saturday, February the 17th. Services are at Union Grove Missionary Baptist Church in Memphis, Tennessee. Shall we all bow your heads for the prayer? Dear most holy and righteous Father, we come this time thanking you for having allowed us to present ourselves together to worship service. Pray, Father, that Bible class tonight might have been pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Pray, Father, for Brother Philip Alexander as he embarks on us a lesson that will be beneficial to each of us. Pray that we may be able not to just keep it within these walls, but might take it with us and maybe apply it to our everyday lives. Pray, Father, for those that are bereaved this time, those in the hospital sick or at home sick or having to deal with issues beyond their control. Pray, Father, you be with them, help them, guide them, give them the care and comfort they stand in need of. Pray, Father, you always forgive us of the sins we've committed either by word, thought, or deed. Pray that our lives might be such that we may be able to show the ones in the world, our friends and relatives, that we are true Christians. Pray, Father, for each and every family that is represented here tonight. Pray, Father, as we go through this lesson, that you may help us to always put thee first in our lives and, the, and that we may not grow weary in well-doing. Pray, Father, that through this lesson tonight, that you will help us to strive to be better Christians on tomorrow than we were today. Pray, Father, you keep us, guide us, protect us. These may have blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Powers. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you. Good evening to everybody. Two people. Good evening to the rest of you all. Thank you. Thank you. I see some new faces in here. I see, I see some new faces. So we got to act right today, me and Sister Hightower. We have to act right today, Sister Hightower. Praise the Lord. Uh, but uh, we see some new faces, so we will be on our best behavior because we have company. So we will do that. Got a lot to cover, got a lot to cover, so we're going to try to do this in three and a half hours if we can. Uh, now, if I told you Beyonce was here, you wouldn't be rushing it. Beyonce, come on in. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> you ain't Beyonce, I got it. Question for you, and I want you to listen to the question. Don't rewrite the question. Don't change the question. Don't try to add a scripture to the question. Just answer the question, okay? Is that okay? What action, what action that we do daily that can bring joy or hurt to someone? Repeat it again. What action can we do that we do daily that can bring joy or hurt to somebody? Anybody? Huh? Talking, anything else? Smiling. How are you gonna bring hurt to somebody smiling, Sister Sheila? Let, let me read that word. One, let me read that question one more time. What action that we do daily that can bring joy or hurt to someone? The words that come out of our mouth. Anybody else? Huh? Giving a gift? How are you going to bring hurt to somebody bringing a, gift, uh, bringing a gift? Oh, if it's your anniversary. Oh. Huh? Look, how you look at somebody? Well, this is a holy audience, so we don't accept that. You know what we do? And, and, and you said it. You said it. Speaking. Talking. And talking, we can bring... Hurt, joy, or hurt? Let's talk about joy. How can I bring joy by talking to someone? Well, do we realize that with the action of speaking, that you and I can bring peace to somebody? Can, can, we can bring encouragement to somebody? We can show love to somebody? By talking, we show comfort, we show support, by... by uh, Speaking, we can calm somebody down. Amen? We can give them confidence. What else can we do to bring joy to somebody by speaking? We can pray for them. That's it. I took all, your, all the rest of the answers. 
Okay, so how do I, how do I then bring hurt by speaking? Since I'm a Christian, how can I possibly, being so holy, hurt somebody by speaking? Huh? Negative? Aggression? You know, you know, I can, believe it or not, I can shame somebody by speaking. How do I do that? I can embarrass them. I can shame someone. Let's just go through it because we got a lot to cover. I can embarrass somebody. How about I can lie on somebody and I can lie about somebody? Just by speaking. I can hurt somebody's character just by using the words. You know what else I can do? We're going to get into text. I can ruin somebody. I can demean somebody. I can elevate somebody. I can mistreat somebody. I could even con somebody. Amen? Christians don't con. We can mislead somebody. Some of us, we can cuss you out. Some of us can curse you out. That's a difference. We'll talk about that in here. So this is part one to possibly a three-part lesson. Okay, this is just part one. All those things we can do, either one of those things, with our mouth, speaking, and demeaning, it depends on where you rank with me or in my personal world and in my value system. Let me say that. We're going somewhere, I promise you. And depending on where you rank or are in our personal world and our value system, it depends who you are, will depend on how and will help us to decide how we're going to do a certain thing. It's going to depend. It's going to depend where you rank in my value system, how I'm going to speak to you. It depends on how important you are, how I'm going to speak to you. It depends on the harshness in my tone of words, who you are, and where you rank in my personal life. It may be, I know you're not going to agree with me, but it may be how often I speak to you. You ain't that important. I don't need to speak to you that many times. I spoke last month. But if you are important to me, and you are important in my personal life, I'm going to speak as much as I can. Is that true? Thank you, sister, because I wrote that, and I was hoping I didn't write a lie. It depends on where you are, is that my motivation to speaking to you? If you're not that high in my personal ranking, in my personal life, why am I motivated to speak to you? Unless I want to borrow some money. Unless I need something from you. And then I'm motivated to speak to you. It may even be my attitude when I speak. It could be my attitude when I speak. When I speak, how, how determine your response back to me? I can determine how you respond to me, uh, respond back to me, how, how I say it to you. We're going somewhere. It determines the spirit in which I speak to you. It would also determine how I throw around my rank, how I throw around my position, my name, my family. My age, I'm older than you. I can talk to you the way I want to talk to you. Amen? Old folks, amen? We talk harsh. I mean, you all talk harsh to us young folk. And you blame it on your age. You said, I can talk to you this way because I'm, I'm old enough to be your mother. Does that give me a right to talk to somebody harshly? Tonight's lesson, let me give you a disclaimer. 
I have to do this this disclaimer. Tonight's lesson will be several things. It will be uncomfortable for you to hear, for some of you to hear. It was uncomfortable for me to write it. So some of you, it will be uncomfortable to hear. We're not trying to shock you. I'm just giving you a disclaimer that this tonight's lesson will be challenging to some of you. It will challenge you. Tonight's lesson will be understood by some of you. Some of you are going to walk around, and, and you're going to listen to tonight's lesson, and you're going to misunderstand what I'm trying to say. Tonight's lesson is going to anger maybe one or two of you. You quiet. Tonight's lesson is going to be helpful to most of you. But I promise you this, it will be biblical and keeping with God's word. Okay? You might go through all of these things, and we have a therapist on duty. Call 1-800-THERAPIST. After the class, you are upset. But let's get to the scriptures. Let's go to James. I need a reader. James chapter 3. Need a reader. I want you to wait for us at verse 1. James chapter 3, verse 1. We're not going to read it just yet. I want, to, I want to set this last page up. James chapter 3, verse 1. Let me say this. One of the misconceptions, I believe, among God's people is the following things are tearing and destroying the church. If you ask people, what is tearing up? What is destroying the church? The church is not like it used to be. It's changed so much. People would say, well, you know what? They got base mics. Back in the day, we didn't have base mics. Uh, you're going to say women's roles have changed. Women were a little more solid back in the day. They were not seen. They were, they were, they were seen, but they were not heard. Uh, you know, what has changed? Singing groups now has changed. You think I'm going somewhere. I'm going to the opposite. You know, we used to go to and we had one song leader. Now we got several song leaders. That has changed, and that's tearing up the church. And then we got all these titles, Dr. This and this person and this person. And now we got all these things that are tearing up the church. If you ask people, what is, what is going on? Why is the church in the condition that it's in? And we'll quote one of these. But, and while these things are challenging, the uncomfortable issues, to, to, to understand, and, and it divides us sometimes. Because if I ask any of you, you're going to have a mixed uh, group of answers on what you think is, is, is the problem. But I want to say this. I would say one of the things, one of the biggest issues and challenges that is as destructive in the church, you can add all of these up, but one of the biggest things, I think, and challenges that the church face is that we, how we speak and treat one another. How we speak and how we treat one another. Now, you could tell me how wrong I am. Because it's certainly got to be, you know, we got five song leaders. You know, it got to be that. It got to be the women's role. It's how we speak and treat one another. And if it wasn't an issue back then for them, James wouldn't have addressed it in his letters. And if it wasn't going to be an issue for us years later, then God wouldn't have put it in his word. How we speak to and treat each other. This is our first part of the lesson. Go to James chapter 3 and verse 1. I want you, who is my reader? We're going to walk through this text. Okay, sis, what translation you have? This is NIV. Okay, let's walk through this text. Okay. Not many mm -hmm. of you mm -hmm. should become 
teachers, hmm. my fellow believers. Stop there. He starts off with a warning. And he says, what's this? Not many of not, you. Not many of you. Should become teachers. Hmm? My fellow believers. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not where I want to go, but I got to go through this to get to where I need to be. So I'm not going to skip over this verse to get to another verse. So bear with me through this verse, okay? Now, my question is, don't, don't you, you can stay, just hold, hold what you got. What comes to mind when we read the beginning of this verse? What comes to your mind when James says, not many of you shall become teachers, my fellow believers? What comes to your mind? What stands out to you? Anybody? A warning? What else? Not everybody will be able to teach a word. Anybody else? Hmm? Most of us? Hmm. Hmm. I, well, you know what comes to my church? Why would you tell believers no church I know of how more than enough teachers why would you then, James, tell the churches, the believers, not all of you should become teachers? That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Why would you start off a chapter talking about teachers when most of the rest of the chapter is on the use of your tongue? Why would you do that? Hmm? Hold on, hold on. We're going to bring your mic. Lord, if you just send us just one runner. Thank you, Brother Lee. Thank you. Go ahead, sis. <laughs> because not everybody is going to receive the word. Because um, sometimes um, people... Um, not, you know, the great, uh, I think that in my Bible it talks about the Great Commission, mm -hmm. and, and it says that not everybody's going to receive the Great Commission, and that's mm -hmm. why he was telling everybody will not understand what they're saying, and everybody will not teach it to them according to God's scripture. Okay, okay. All right, we're going to yeah. challenge that. We're going to see. We got Sister Hightower. I think he's saying this because a teacher cannot teach without using the tongue. And so that means that the teacher's method and of speaking and reality of speaking has to be precise. And now when he gave a warning, mm -hmm. and that's the way I saw it when he first read mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that means that a teacher is going to be held accountable to a greater extent of not doing it right. Okay. I see a hand back. I see a couple of hands. Lord, if you could just send us just one more runner. Just one more runner. Do I have a sister who want to run in my... Oh, okay. That's all I have to say that. We, we're going to get a brother to jump up. Thank you, Brother Charlie. I appreciate it. That's all we had to say. We need a sister. <laughs> my wife said, Philip. Okay, we good. We good. What I was going to say about a teacher is it's always... Who's, Who's talking? Oh, me. Thank you, sis. Uh, it depends on the student and how they perceive what the teacher is talking about. Hmm. Okay, we'll come back to that. Yes, sir. But upon that, I see uh, Can I read the Living Bible? Yes, version? sir. But stop where she stopped. Don't go past to where she stopped. Okay. Go ahead. Dear brothers, I see somebody hands do not be there. eager to tell others their fault, for we all make mistakes. Were you on chapter, you on verse one? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Say it again. We all make mistakes when we teach religion, when we should know better, do wrong, our punishment will be greater than 
Okay, you can stop there. Fun. You can stop there. I got you. I'm coming back to that verse. Go ahead. That part of the verse. Go ahead. The yes, first sir. thing that comes to my mind is qualification. Uh, because first of all, to teach, you have to know. And you have to be, you have to know enough of the word to teach. So therefore, qualification is what brings to mind that some of you would not be qualified to teach. But we need teachers, sis. But I think... I, Set her I think straight, we sister. Have. Who's talking? Thank you, Set her straight. I am. Okay, who's... Okay, thank you, sister. I was, oh, sister, young. <laughs> I think we, we just put teachers in a box. Just at this point, what we're doing is putting them in a box because... You don't have to be in a classroom and be a teacher. Everybody is a teacher. Somebody can learn something from everybody. So that means that mm. everybody's tongue needs to be tamed. So I think that's why he said he went over that whole thing that, that you need to tame your mouth. But when he, okay, when okay, he's okay, speaking of teachers, cut the class I'm sorry. short by 30 minutes, please. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I think that when he's saying teachers, he's talking about just regular people. I teach a four and five year old class, but not just necessarily me, mm. but that person that's sitting in Bible class, mm. when they get ready to talk to somebody else and they're teaching them, they're included in that. Okay, we're gonna come back to that. Uh, I saw a couple of and hands just to we, need, we need to get back into it. Go ahead. And just to piggyback yes, off of what she's saying, basically everybody doesn't want to hear the truth. Say it so again, sis. Everyone doesn't want to hear the truth. Mm -hmm. So that's why it would be hard to teach. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, I also sir. think it's along the line, uh, teachers, you say one thing, but you have to act out what you say. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times your teacher will say one thing, but their life is not showing that. Hmm. And I hmm. got that from that end where it's talk about strict judgment. Okay, okay. We cut the class by 10 more minutes. Uh, <laughs> we, soon we're gonna dismiss in a second. Uh, did we miss anybody? Because I want to get back to this. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Read the King James. Thank you. It says, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Okay. Okay. Since, thank you. Since we want to get to that part, let's get to that part. In the remaining words of this verse, this is why we walk through a verse. We don't run through it. James will tell us, and thank you all, because what you did is that you said, let me look at the, all of that verse. In the remaining verse, James will tell you why he said, now many of you shall become teachers, my fellow believers. Who's my reader? Sister, Sister um, Gibson? Hold on, let's walk through here. She got a mic? Okay. Because what? Because you know. Uh, let's, let's, we're going to walk through this. Four different reasons. Because you know. That Hold we. Hold on. <laughs> Those who are new to the class. They showing out because you are here. And they want to show you how fast they can read. Because you know means you have knowledge of something. What do I have knowledge of, sister? That we who teach. We who speak as teachers. What, sis? Will be judged. We will. This has to do with condemnation. It has to do with you answering to somebody. What, is that, what else does it say, sister? More strictly. It's a degree of something. You who teach have this knowledge that you will be condemned. You will be judged more strictly mm -hmm. to a greater condemnation by whom? By others? No, by God. 
how is God going to judge me as a teacher when they told me in Mississippi we need a teacher? And I said, I'll answer the call. How, will God, how can God hold that against me? And will he? Hmm. But why? 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 Uh, you know what? I'm only doing it because nobody else dare to do it. And that's what I'm going to tell God. There was nobody else to teach, and I answered the call. Then I'm going to say, you know what? I'm a safe and a traditional teacher. I know what your word said, but I was safe with your word. I'm going to say, you know what, Lord? I am new at this teaching thing. I'm just new at it. Can I say, I am just teaching new converts, and they don't know nothing? James, can I tell them, I'm just teaching teenagers. They on their phones anyway. It doesn't matter because I'm teaching kids. It doesn't matter because I'm teaching senior citizens. I had something for that, but I'm not going to mess up. There's too many seniors. I'm not going to say what I was going to say. So I'm just teaching this group of people. Does it really matter about how I teach? Really? Yes. Charlie, you know she don't even need a mic. I don't know why you're running that mic over there. And that means... You are saying, put yourself up as a teacher. Mm -hmm. You know what he has said in his word mm -hmm. about his word. Okay. And he does not want it misquoted or changed. All right. All right, Charlie, that's enough. Okay, thank you, Queen. We appreciate that. This is, thank you, Sitata. People think I'm pick on you, Sitata. Would you tell them we, okay, okay, good. She's safe. Oh, Lord, okay. This is not a warning about who you are or even who you are teaching. This is not why we will be judged strictly. It's not about who you are, that you are a new person in teaching. It's not even about who you're teaching. It has to do with what you are teaching. It has to do with what you are teaching. What does that mean? What does that mean, what you are teaching? Huh? The content? The content? It's, it has to do with, are you teaching the Bible? Or... Are you teaching traditions? Or am I teaching what the word says? Am I teaching what the word says? Or am I teaching what is comfortable for me? And that's tradition. Am I teaching the word? Or am I teaching my comfort level? I don't feel comfortable saying that. I know the scriptures say it, but I just don't. Because if we tell them that, then they're going to do this. And we can't control them. Is it, are you teaching the Bible? Are you teaching legalism? What's legalism? Rules, regulations. What you think? It has to do with rules and regulations, but you know, sometimes I teach my feelings. That's right. I teach what I feel. I teach what I think. I teach my opinion. Yeah, I know what the scriptures say, but I'll tell you what I would say. I'm going to tell you what to do. We teachers will have to answer to God about, about, did you teach your traditions? Did you teach your comfort level? Did you teach legalism? Did you teach your feelings, your thoughts, your opinion? 
what's always safe? Insight. And I'm, no, I'm not, I'm trying to say it right so it won't come out wrong. I don't like teaching scared. I used to teach scared. I used to teach, well, if I say this, then this is going to happen. And when I realized that I got an answer to a higher power than you, even though some things I would say I have taught in, in let me make up a Chicago, I just lied, I'm sorry, in Houston, it was uncomfortable for you. It, bought, it, it, it dealt against your traditions, your legalistic mind. But what I try to do is for me, I have to be true to the word. And sometimes the word would offend me. And I know sometimes it offends you. It doesn't matter if you are a beginner teacher. There is no excuse to teach your opinion, your comfort level, your, your traditions. Now, this is just an uncomfortable part. We get into it with the rest of the lesson. It doesn't matter if you are a seasoned teacher. Some of us who are seasoned teachers, we teach tradition, comfort, our feelings, our opinions. It doesn't matter to God if you are a one-on-one -on -one teacher. Some of us don't stand before nobody. We don't, we don't teach in front of nobody. We do a one-on-one, -on -one, and that's our way of teaching. That's our way, and that's a good way. Not everybody are a public teacher. Some of us, we convert people one-on-one, -on -one, and we are comfortable in that, in that environment, but it doesn't matter. You can't just teach anything. It doesn't matter if you're the minister of any congregation, Chicago, New York, Mississippi, Alabama, you can't teach your traditions, your comfort level, your legalism, your, your feelings, and your opinion. Guess what? It doesn't even matter if you're a pastor teacher. Now, what's a pastor teacher? You just made up that. When you go to Ephesians chapter 4, and he talks about he gave some to be, some to be this, some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be. When it gets to, and this is where we read it, we read he gave some pastors or elders, and then we slash it says he gave some teachers. That's not how it's written in the original. It's written, he gave some pastor teacher, which means what? If you're a pastor, you're an elder, you are also a teacher. And in order to be an elder, you have to be a teacher. You have to. You cannot say, I'm an elder in, give me a city, give me a state. In Manville, Texas, but I don't teach because I don't know the Bible well. You cannot because it's pastor teachers. Now, don't accept anything I say to you tonight. Do your own research, okay? Don't take my opinion. Don't take my thoughts. We are responsible for how we teach, explain, Divide the word of God. All of us. And sometimes the reason why some people are not growing, are not Im that, are, that some people are immature, they are clueless, and still on milk in the church, because that's all we've been giving them is milk. And as teachers, we have to grow. If you're a teacher and you have not grown in teaching, 
then all you're doing is giving your, 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 the audience milk. If you are any one of these, I don't care if you one-on-one, -on -one, and you are not growing daily in your understanding of God's word, you're studying, all you're doing is giving milk. And the only problem with milk is that at some point, somebody got to have some meat. Okay, now I told you I had to get through all of that to get to where I want to be. You thought it was a whole lesson on teachers. <laughs> Who's my reader? Let's get a new reader. Thank you, Sister Gibson. I appreciate you. Uh, James chapter 3, same chapter. I need a reader for verses 2. Through verse 4, sis, walk us through it, please. We all stumble in many ways. Uh-huh. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. Hmm. James begins these verses to talk about things that keep other things in check or control. What does he say, sis? When we put bits into the mouth. He says you put bits in the mouth of a well. Horses. Of a horses. Why, sis? To make them obey us. You do that to help or make the horse to obey. What else do we do, sis? We can turn the whole animal. Uh-huh. Or take ships. Uh-huh. As an example Although they are so large mm -hmm. and are driven by strong winds, mm -hmm. they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. The rudder on a ship, there's a reason why a rudder is on a ship. Why? To help make it easier to be controlled by the pilot. Are we on the same page? Are we good? Now, what else, sis? First of all, a bit is small but does its job when it's properly used. A rudder is small but it does its job when it properly is used. Go to the next verse, my sister. My sister? <laughs> verse 5? She just closed the book up and said, I don't talk with that. Likewise. Hold on, walk us through it. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body. The tongue is a small part of a large body. The tongue is a small part of a large body. But what does it do, sis? But it makes great boasts. Stop there. That little tongue, that part of your big body, it makes great boasts. That word great is where we get our word mega from. It's, it's large. And what do we make that large? We make our boasting. We talk big. That little small tongue we have still talks big. Where are we going? So what happens, sis? Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. He says, consider, subtranslates it says, see. The word means behold, look. What a great forest matter is set on fire by what? A small spark. A small spark. We going somewhere. What is James trying to talk to us and tell us about the tongue? Anybody? What is James trying to tell us? Let me, let me read that verse again. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Look what a great fire matter is set on fire by a small spark. What is he trying to tell us? Yes, Mike. Okay, go ahead. I see, and then we got to the hot topic. I, yes. I, so, my apologies. 
I keep looking at this. It has to do with what you are teaching. Hmm. And I keep going back to the first one. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to connect them. Mm -hmm. And so in the way that I'm connecting it versus what I'm reading in scripture versus what you're saying here is mm -hmm. more tangible. And two things that I think about, mm -hmm. it has to do with what you're teaching. Okay, so I think about the relationship between a mother and a daughter. Mm -hmm. Am I teaching my child value? Am I teaching her self-worth? Am I pouring into her confidence? Am I pouring into her strength? Mm -hmm. Because if it has to do with what you are teaching, Talk, talk, I'm using the mic. the mic. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. If it because if, if it has to do with what you are teaching mm -hmm. when we talk about those values, those intrinsic values, do I have it really within myself hmm. to teach that? And so when we go back to what one of the sisters over here said, your qualifications, right? What what disqualifies you and what qualifies you from mm -hmm. being able to teach? Mm -hmm. Are you able to support, to comfort, to calm? And so to me, it's bringing all of those verses together. The word will take care of itself, but it has to do with what you are teaching and like your in intrinsic value, like how you, how you value the word, how you value yourself. When you said the word, makes sense. when you said the word would take care of itself, I want you to expound a little bit on that. When you said the word will take care of itself, what is that? That's why. Go ahead. And so just just in the sense that what what we're reading, mm -hmm. like the word of God is is pure. Mm -hmm. Right. If it's if 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 it's pure. So how do we teach that? How do how do we teach its pureness? How do we teach the value of it? Right. Mm -hmm. It 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 has a lot to do with. What we how we view the word mm -hmm. as as valuable, if if that makes sense. Okay. I'm not trying to get like too deep, but it's, no, no, to me, I keep looking at that term. It has to do with what you are teaching. The truth is the truth and nothing is going to change what the truth mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. But do I value it enough? Do I value God enough? Do I value myself enough? Do I value who and what I'm teaching to teach them its value? Okay. Keep in mind, this is part one to like a three part lesson, but I got you. Uh, everything's in my, okay, I want to address that. But we probably won't address it tonight, but I want to address it. Go ahead. Sister Lisa Nobles, yes. um, study to show thyself approved unto God. Mm -hmm. A workman needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Mm -hmm. Second Timothy 2.15. Mm -hmm. But shine pro, uh, profane and vain babbling. Mm -hmm. And we are subjected through the word of God because we know that in the beginning was the word. The word was God, John 1 and 1. Mm -hmm. And how do we feed Matthew 4 and 4? Mm -hmm. We should, we feed on the word of God because the word of God is our spirit, spiritual nutrient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, what I was thinking of as mm -hmm. Brother Alexander and the rest of the saints are presenting their perspectives mm -hmm. is um, Romans 10, 2 and 3. Mm -hmm. For I bear them record that, I, that they have a zeal of God. Mm -hmm but not according to knowledge. And I think that that's a part of the facet of spiritual growth and teaching. Okay. When we are speaking on God's behalf, we are okay. bringing someone to Christ, for example, mm -hmm. it has to be according to the knowledge that we are obtaining from Matthew 4 and 4, John 1 mm -hmm. and 1. Okay. I, we, I, I'm does that make sense what I'm saying? To close unless you're going to give us another hour. Now. Okay, I'm yes, sorry. Yes. But that's, that's kind of where I was yeah. think, no, thinking. Okay. Keep in mind, in this text, okay, go ahead. I think James is trying to tell us that we are going to be held accountable mm -hmm. for every word that we speak, mm -hmm. and particularly every word that we teach to someone else. Okay, now I got 10 minutes to, 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 to make, some, make some... Keep in mind, this text starts off talking about teachers but does not continue just on teachers. Okay? We'll show that later, okay? So what James is trying to tell us about our tongue, 
because he goes on with some other verses. But what he's trying to tell us about our tongue is our tongue does the dirty work of something. Our tongue does the dirty work of our thoughts. The tongue would do, you're going to see, he's not just talking about teachers. He starts off verse 1 as talking about teachers. But then he moves, he progresses to, to us individually. The, the tongue does the dirty work of our feelings. I got nine minutes, I'm going to try to do this. It does the dirty work of our intentions. How? How does the tongue, how does our tongue does the dirty work of our thoughts and our feelings and our intentions? Anybody? How? The tongue, by putting into the words what they won't do. See, what I can do, I can think evil of you and you will never know. I can think evil of you and you'll never know. I can feel hatred towards you and you may never even know. And I'm smiling at you, but I hate you. I can have bad intentions towards you and you may not even know it. But guess what? While I can hide all of this evilness, hatred, and bad intentions inside of me, the only way you would know how I think, what I'm feeling, my intentions, is my tongue will do something. What would my tongue do? My tongue is going to do what a tongue does. It's going to talk. See, my thoughts and my feelings and my intentions, I keep within. But my tongue can't hold it. It's going to talk. And you know what my tongue is going to do? My tongue is going to do? And rest assured, it will do the dirty work that the others don't want to do. It will do it with no discretion. It will do it with pleasure. It will do it with happiness. It will do it with jealousy. It will do it by just hearsay. I don't even have to, the tongue don't even have to see it. I heard. Don't say nothing. Because we don't need all of it. We just need half the truth. It, it will do it, it will do it with harmful intentions. I say I'm not trying to harm you, but I really am. It will do it with half truths, with no filter. Now, you know what? We'll say this. Come on now. The sister was over there. I saw her done. She was cursing. Now, I don't curse, but let me tell you what she said. And then we start cursing. I mean, cussing. We start cussing. Now, that ain't what I said, because, you know, I don't cuss. <laughs> nobody. Okay, nobody. All right, all right. Wrong, <laughs> wrong group. It would do it with no sympathy. I heard your child is pregnant. You should know better. She should know better. Oh, by the way, we're praying for you, too. You know you don't mean it. And a small spark would do what, sis? It was set ablaze. Once you let your, talk, your tongue start talking and hurting people, it was set ablaze on people's families. I'm not sure that's her husband. It looked like a husband. I have, and that's not her. Let me call somebody. Okay, wrong group. It will mess up somebody's personal life. It will mess up anybody who has hope on being anything. 
By the time your tongue gets through, they can run for dog catcher. It will ruin somebody's reputation. Am I just talking? Some of us, well, this is a holy audience. One of us have done some damage to people by talking. And most of it, we don't even know if it was true or not. And we don't hurt people's families. We don't hurt their children. We don't hurt their opportunities. We have done stuff because we talked. And our tongue, we did not control. And that's just not teaching. That's living daily. And we ruined some folk. And some of these people died a broken heart, and you still talking. Do you know how much stuff, how much information we say, we don't even know if it's true or not? How much we repeat? Do you know how many lies we tell under the disguise that, you know, we got, we got to make the story juicy? Wrong lesson, huh? And you, Mr. and Mrs., you, brother and sister, will sing after you ruin somebody, after you ruin their family, their personal life, their reputation. You will sing church songs. You will pray. You will worship like nothing happened. You will teach like nothing happened. You will be a leader like nothing happened. And you will act like nothing happened. And you have ruined somebody's life. This is why James says this little thing that caused great boast. And sometimes we boast about it. like we've done nothing wrong. Any comments before I tell you what we're going to talk about next week? Yes, ma'am. Hold on, we got a scripture over here, Charlie. Oh, I'm sorry, did we? Oh, he's going to come. It's his wife. He go, Charlie, he got it. He's going to make sure. <laughs> She's going to hold the mic. For this one. Thank you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> then he sits down and look at me. Contemporary English version. Yes, ma'am. Verse James 3 and 5 and 6. Our tongues are small too, and yet they brag about big things. It takes only a spark to start a forest fire. The tongue is like a spark. It is an evil power that dirties the rest of the body and sets a person's entire life on fire with flames that come from hell itself. Hmm. I like that. I like that. Any other comments before we close? Yes, ma'am. The, the tongue only speaks what the heart believes. You think we believe everything we say? The heart. Your heart. Hey, sit tight. Don't make it personal. I said, <laughs> you think. She pointed. Your heart. All right. You think we believe everything. We, you think we believe every gossip we say? No, the heart. The thoughts of the heart the comes okay. through the tongue. Okay. Now, if your heart means to destroy, it's unpure, mm -hmm. it's ungodly, mm -hmm. it is not led by the Spirit. Yes, ma'am. So it speaks. I like that. I like that. I like that. Anybody else before we wrap it up? I see a couple of hands. And for the leave right here. I was, I was thinking about when you talked about the spark and all of that mm -hmm. and the. Um, what was it, the rudder on the yes, boat, the, rudder. the ship? All of them are small, including your tongue. Mm -hmm. And it's just like that rock that you get in your shoe. <laughs> it's very, very tiny, but it causes a lot of damage. Yes, I mean, you cannot function with that rock in your shoe, so you have to stop and take it mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, the tongue is small, but it's mighty because of the damage that it can cause. Mm -hmm. And I told you this is part one. Go ahead. You got the last word. And I'm going to 
tell you what we're going to talk about next week. No, I was just going to say, um, am I talking loud enough now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, we got good. You. We got you. Okay, so I, but, but. I, I think that's precise. This is all of what you said towards the end is precisely the point that I'm trying that that I was trying to make. And mm -hmm. I appreciate Sister Nobles bringing up those those mm -hmm. scriptures because that's mm -hmm. the point. Mm -hmm. What are you teaching? Just like what Sister Hightower mm -hmm. just said. What are you teaching mm -hmm. when what comes out of your mouth? It's already inside of your head to begin with. So what mm -hmm. are you teaching? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next week. Lesson part two, when my Christianity and my tongue are in disagreement with each other. <laughs> when my Christianity and my tongue are in disagreement with each other. Come at three o'clock in the evening because it's going to be a long lesson. No, no. I know you got Valentine next week. I know you're going to. Bring your sweethearts, you're gonna have your tuxedos on and everything. But but those who are able to come to class, this is where we're going. Where my Christianity and my tongue are in disagreement with each other. This is gonna get the second part of our lesson. It's gonna get into the heart of the lesson. We just kind of did the introduction, but this, the second part of the lesson is gonna be a little bit more intense. We wanna we wanna also encourage, thank you all for those who are here for the first time in this classroom. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. We appreciate it. We're glad to have you. Uh, but we look forward to seeing more. So we, we look forward to it. Thank you so much. Um, prayer request.